we're going to talk today about uh, Health Unlocked and other resources that are available on the internet. And this has come basically from questions from the last two conferences in Leicester and Liverpool. And a lot of people said, what's Health Unlocked? What's it all about? How can it be used? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, the answer to this question may mean that this is the shortest talk today. Because if everybody here uses Health Unlocked, I'm redundant. So would you please raise your hand if you do use Health Unlocked? OK, now if you don't. OK, that probably means it's worthwhile going on for a bit. Yeah, it's about half and half, I'd say. So I'll, I'll carry on with apologies to those people to whom this will be old knowledge. Now, the first thing to ask is why bother with things like Health Unlocked or other resources? Well, the Mayo Clinic did some research, and that was confirmed by another study in Germany, that research shows that informed patients live longer. Now, let's think about that. I don't know about you, but that's quite a good argument to me to have a look at this sort of thing. So why are the resources helpful? Patients live longer. Why do they live longer? Why do they seem to live longer? And the average was at least two years on the study. That's quite significant, I think. Because informed patients know what questions to ask. A consultant once told me that the most concerning thing for him was when a patient left the consultation having asked no questions, because he didn't know that he was getting through to that patient. His wife later said to me that she always knew when we were going for a consultation because the night before, he'd lock himself up in his study and mug up on all the latest research because he knew quite likely he was going to get asked some questions the next day. I think it's good to keep him on the toes every now and again. Informed patients manage their condition better but why should that be? They know what symptoms may develop, and they do tend to get early intervention. They know about treatments, and when they're necessary, and when they're not necessary. They know about the drugs that are available, and their side effects, so they can recognize side effects earlier, and respond back to the clinician. They know about trials, and the pros and cons of trials, and they can have, therefore, an informed opinion. They also learn about things like the importance of exercise and diet. Uh, I'd just like to give you a quote from uh, Dr. Brian Kaufman, who is well known within the community. He is a CLL patient in the States and has a, uh, a website and a blog which I'd urge you to have a look at. He says, the reasons to be an informed and proactive patient are becoming more and more cogent and numerous than just a few years ago. Whether we're newly diagnosed or on watch and wait, perhaps approaching treatment, we can enhance the quality and length of our lives by an overall strategy of being informed. He says, we're playing a game called CLL. The challenge for us is to tip the odds in our favor, as opposed to the patient who relies on pure chance. So we have a choice. I think one of the most important aspects of, of what we're talking about today, certainly to, to many, many people, is the access to a community of supported, caring, and understanding people. And I think that, that's very important. We're talking about Health Unlocked. And on Health Unlocked, you'll find there's a dialogue going on 
between patients, carers, clinicians, and that can be very useful and very supportive to many, many people. So, what resources are available? What should we use? And how do we access it? There's plenty of information on the internet, much of which is suspect or misleading. There is a saying in the community which says, beware Dr. Google, you may die from a misprint. And it's amazing how many people go onto Google, put in CLL, put in symptoms, and then are horrified by the results. There was a report in the Sun newspaper this week of a lady aged 39 who was diagnosed and spent six months, she had three children, very young to be diagnosed with CLL, and she spent six months worrying about what she'd learned on Google. Avoid it if you can. So we're going to look today at one site in particular that we know to be completely reliable and how we can access and use it. First, a little background about what Health Unlocked actually is. It's a global website that has different streams for different conditions um, and for different patients. And one of those streams is for CLL. A few years ago, one of the CLLA trustees, Nick York, I'm glad to say he's, he's here today, and I'll introduce you to him in a minute. Uh, and he'll be around to answer any sort of questions you might have. He is the expert on this, believe me. Uh, he said about creating our own CLSA section on Health Unlocked. He, that's quite an undertaking, and he spent a lot of time and effort and his personal time on doing it. It's grown enormously over the last few years and continues to grow. And I think Nick deserves a lot of thanks uh, for creating what we're going to look at today. Nick, would you like to just stand up and, and say hello? I mean, everybody, everybody knows him. That, that, that's Nick. He's the one in the red T-shirt. Yeah, he'll, um, he'll answer any questions you like about this. So Nick will correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is just a general feel for what it is. There are about, at the moment, 5,500 members, and it's growing all the time. Roughly 40% are UK, roughly 40% of the states, with Australia and the rest of the world, particularly Canada as well. So people go on there from all over the world. The things I want to emphasize is it, it is very reliable. It's well moderated, and on there, there are very informed and very caring people. And I think today, it's probably the foremost peer-to-peer -peer website for CLL in the world. These are some of the typical quotes that you get. These are from the last week that I just trawled through. Some typical quotes from people who have been on to Health Unlocked and found it beneficial. I mean, there are some great ones here. This site literally saved my life. And that's a, it's a very nice, when you read the story behind that, it, it, it's quite amazing. You'll see a lot of I'm new here, he's my story. That's a good way to introduce yourself on it. It is a site where you can have a dialogue with people who are like-minded, who either have the same problems, know people with the same problems, or are carers, or are clinicians. So that's just a sort of typical daily comment that you get on the site. And the community aspect, I think, is, is worth stressing. Now, you don't have to make comments on the site. You can just log on and see what's going on. Because on there, there will be also just about every latest development that you can think of in CLL. So clinicians will appear on there in videos. All the latest research will be on there. And it's a great place to learn about CLL. If you do decide to post a question, 
it will get answered, and it will get answered in a very sympathetic and knowledgeable way. So how do we get on to Health Unlocked, having established that, yeah, it's a great place to be? Well, there are lots of ways of getting on there, but I'm going to suggest this particular way, which is very straightforward and very simple, which is to go on to the CLLSA website, which I'm sure everybody knows. If not, get to know it, because that's the key. And you'll see on the website, uh, a outlined in red there, which is news. If you then scroll down to the bottom one, which is online community, you'll come up with the page on the right-hand side there. And outlined in red there, you'll see a series of blue headings for all sorts of topics about CLL. Click on any one of those, any one at all, and you'll come up with this page. And you'll see that it's labeled CLSA. It's got the CLSA color on it. And that's the introduction page. So it's really a very simple few-step process. You'll have to, in order to access the site itself, you'll have to become a member. Very, very simple thing to do. Just fill in the boxes. And the one thing to remember is to limit your posts, if you're going to post, to the community only. So you fill the boxes in. You'll limit your quotes. That's just for confidentiality and to make sure that anything you want to say on there is not seen by someone outside, only by members of the site. Very simple thing to do. That you come up when you join with a very simple, this is a sample of the sort of page uh, that you get. And on the right hand side of that page, if you, if you click on any of these, um, you might want to learn about a particular topic. On the right hand side, you'll find a panel with associated relevant topics there. So it's a mine of information. It really is. These are just some of the topics from last week. And they range from things like changing CD38. OK, that might not mean much to many people. But a lot of the things on here are interesting. There's been a lot recently on dental work. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation about, should I have dental work done? I'm on arbutinib. I'm not. Uh, and there's a lot of conversation and advice about when to, to have dental work or whether you should have dental work. Um, what questions should I ask my doctor? Whole range of answers for that and some very helpful comments. If you're really interested in the biology of CLL, it's a great place to be. There was last week Dr. Anna Shu, who we've just seen, whole genome sequencing, a whole paper on that. If you really want to get down to it, you've got something like at the bottom, putative, non-coding, cis-regulatory drivers in CLL. Absolutely fascinating. I downloaded it. I understood three words. <laughs> Two of those were the end. But what it does give you an indication is how much and how exciting the new work being done really, really is. And even if you can absorb only 5%, 10%, it's Fascinating. It really is fascinating. But I want to return again to the feeling that it's a community where you can have a dialogue with other people. Because not everybody is going to be interested in the latest cutting edge research. But I think most people would be interested in getting some support from people that understand exactly what's going on. Now, there are lots and lots of resources for information. And I, I just summarize, summarized a few of them here. The CLSA site, of course, there's a lot of information on there. And that, that can be very useful. There's Patient Power, which is run by Andrew Shaw. He's a, a, a patient, a CLL patient in the States. And he runs a site similar in some ways to Health Unlocked. Um, he is very good. He's actually um, uh, conducted, chaired 
one of these conferences uh, in Cambridge a couple of years back, which is still on the website if anyone wants to see it. Um, uh, there's the Seattle Society in the States, which is Brian Kaufman. Again, he's a doctor. He is a patient. Uh, CLL Digest, which I know that several members here have used for many, many years. That's, uh, again, and that's uh, from the States. Leukemia Care UK is a very good website for getting all sorts of information. And Lymphoma News Today, which is a weekly bulletin. When you join a, as a member for Health Unlocked, you'll get a daily bulletin that comes through into your email box every day. You haven't got to look at it every day, of course, but every day there'll be something new there. There'll be some information there. There'll be, um, there'll be comments. We have at least, I think, three people here who contribute to Health Unlocked. And I hope that you'll find it enjoyable, I think is the word. You know, it, it's, 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 quite a, it's quite an enlightening and quite a comforting, in many ways, sight to know that there's so many people all over the world thinking about the same sort of things that you've got. 